Very good. So happy Easter to you all, to all of you uh, who are here with us, our community, who will be heading away for a wee break now uh, after, after lunch today. And to all of you who are joining us on the live stream, apologies for last night's uh, live stream. We know that in the evenings there are a lot of people on the internet, uh, so we share the internet with the neighbours. And um, so in the evenings uh, there's a lot of traffic, so it can slow down the internet, so it might have made the picture a bit stop-starty, but apparently the audio was fine, so uh, apologies if that was in any way uh, interrupting your, your liturgy yesterday evening or last night. Very good. So uh, today, is, today is a great day. See, it's interesting that people, there's, there's this expression going around, you've probably heard of it, uh, known as Catholic guilt. This is where people presume that our faith is all about um, rules and regulations and accusations and shame and all that kind of thing, which of course is untrue. Now, it may be that in the past there may have been uh, an excessively negative view of the faith, but we always have to separate two things. One is what people think the faith is, and the other is what the faith actually is. Okay, these are often they should be the same thing, as in what we think about the faith should be the case, should be true, but often what we think about the faith is not the case. It's not true. So it may be like that in the, the church of the 50s, 60s, maybe 70s, there was um, an excessively uh, negative view of the church and sin and everything was, was, was depraved and so on and so forth. Uh, but is that what the church actually taught? Well, not really. What the church actually taught is still in the catechism, same, same collection of teachings that we've always had. But at times we go through these ebbs and flows where there may be an emphasis more on one thing than on the other. It's very, very important for us to keep this thing in balance, that ultimately we are a people of the Alleluia, a people of the resurrection, a people who recognize that God is Father, a people who recognize that Jesus is Savior, people who recognize that we are lived in by the Holy Spirit. Okay? So we have this profound relationship with God at all times. And he calls us to more. He calls us to sanctity. He calls us to greatness, absolutely. Uh, and we're not for a second uh, saying in any way that that sin isn't serious of course it is i mean it's 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 what it's what the lord had to go up on the cross to fix so of course it's serious of course it exists but we don't need to emphasize only or or, or stay stuck on the the aspect of sin and 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 that we are people who are redeemed and alleluia is our song we are people of the resurrection we are a people of joy and this is very very important to always get across in our faith in our smile in our missionary work that we do so with joy because our faith is joyful. Our faith sets us free. The truth sets us free. The truth can be difficult at times. The truth can be uncomfortable at times. But the truth ultimately sets us free. And so the, the truth of this is that we are just so loved by God. When we think about a quick summary of the last couple of days, when you think about uh, Good Friday, uh, the, the cross... The cross for us today, we, 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 we still don't like that word, you know, take, pick up your cross and follow me, you know. The, 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 you might hear sometimes uh, people describing their illness as a cross or maybe a person as a cross. Definitely not the most complimentary term. Uh, but the cross, we still, we still recognize it and we still see that it's something maybe with a negative aspect. Okay, now that would have been even more the case in, in Jesus' time. Okay, we give a blessing now in the sign of a cross. So we have kind of this, maybe a, a, a heavy understanding of the cross, and yet at the same time, it's a blessing. You know, so we have a kind of a, have both aspects going on. For the Jews, the cross was effectively like the electric chair is for Americans today. We don't have it, but... It was a, uh, the place of death. It was what they would use to threaten Jews, right? So fall into line or else. You know, and it was reserved for the worst of criminals. So it, this, it was exclusively negative, right? It was, it was shame-filled. The person was stripped naked and left to, left to die there, nailed to it or nailed and tied, having to carry their own instrument of torture, always displayed in public so that the whole place could see as an example to everyone else. And then you were left there to die. So you die of blood loss, asphyxiation, uh, exposure. I mean, it was a horrific way to go. So there was nothing, nothing positive 
about the cross. It was horrific. Okay? Even for the first centuries, I think about the first six or seven centuries, the, the cross was never depicted. It was, for, 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 for those who had the, the, kind of the living memory of what it was like under Roman occupation, the, it's like, just like we today, Jeannie, you, you, you'd never show a picture of someone in, in an electric chair. Like it's just, you know, it's brutal. Okay, so in the first centuries, they didn't show this. They, didn't, they, didn't, they, have, they would have the, the cross, but not, not the corpus on it. Like it was just too, too graphic. Okay, so for them, it was exclusively negative. That's why St. Paul underlines it, you know, that uh, the, the Lord loved us so much to give his life for us, right? By death. Death on a cross. He, he underlines that, not just by dying for us, but by death. Death on a cross of all places. Okay, so this, this is ex an exclusively negative view of the cross, understandably. So then God takes something which is, you know, this horizontal negative sign, right? Negative. And turns it into something positive. So it's negative because it's, it was man's hatred or punishment for man, you know, horizontal, brothers. Uh, man's, this, this, this outpouring of, of, of vengeance, of violence on another person. Negative and horizontal. And then the Lord brings into it a, a, a vertical dimension. That this is how God reaches down from heaven to humanity to lift us up. So then the negative becomes a positive. So it's, it's, it's counterintuitive, but it worked. It worked. The, the Lord's plan for our redemption worked. Which means that there is something on the far side of the cross. Right? Like what's... What, what's on the far side of the cross? Because uh, during the cross, during the, the crucifixion, if you will, uh, all we feel and see is, is pain and negativity and maybe even darkness. You, just, you see nothing else. You're just so bogged down with this weight or this grief or this addiction or this hurt or this unforgiveness or these vices. And we're just, you know, the way when, you're, when you're carrying something like, something like that, you're looking at the ground and you're getting maybe pushed down more and more into it. So all you see is it's just like negativity, sadness, death, the ground, where you're going to go, where you're going to end up. And it's, it's, it's heavy going. Our faith teaches us that there is something on the far side of the cross. Right? That the cross doesn't have the last word. There's something on the far side of the cross. And what is that? Well, that is that the Lord can transform every cross into glory. Through love. Love. Love is what transforms a cross which is sad, which is negative, which is wrong, into a blessing. It's love. Love. It's, it's, it's such a simple term, such maybe an overused term, but that's what changes everything. I believe it's a pop song from the 80s. Love changes, changes everything. Um, right? It does though. It does. It changes everything. Uh, with, w without that, then the cross is death and sickness is death and your life ultimately leads to, well, death. And, uh, you know, I, great, that's, that's wonderful. Thanks, Father Patrick, for that homily. Um, you know, so without love, like, everything and anything we do is a dead end and effectively, ultimately, pointless. No matter what good you do, even if you're a doctor and you're saving people 24-7, they're going to die eventually anyway. <laughs> right? You're, you know, you're, you're a guard, you're trying to enforce the, the rules of the road so people can travel safely. They're going to die anyway. Do you know, I mean, what's the point of anything? Like, do you know, pff, we all end up in a hole. So what? <laughs> like, so, but, uh, see, that's, that's the whole thing. Like, without, without this view of love and eternal life, what is the point of anything really? That's why, like, communism, when, when communism kicks in, uh, it, it becomes atheist, atheistic. Because if everyone exists just to serve the system, well, then there's, like, there's no God, there's no, there's no higher power, there's no greater kind of meaning to anything. So what's the point of God? He's not there. We, we aim to serve a system, not to live by higher goals or ideals and, and get to an eternal life. No, we, we live to serve the system here. It's like, it's so negative. It's so negative, so sad. So God transforms the cross 
into glory through love, through love. And that's what makes us victorious in Christ, because then we can do the same. We're called to do the same. Our crosses, our sickness, our grief, uh, whatever has gone wrong in your life, we're called to transform that cross into glory through love, through love. And this is our, our, our lifelong challenge. This is, this is why we're here, to learn how to love, to learn how to love. And it's something, bless, that, you know, every time you make a little bit of a progress, hopefully, in the spiritual life, and you look back and you go, my goodness, how long have I been there? I should have been here all the time. And then you make a little progress, hopefully, a little later on, a couple of weeks or months, and then you go, my goodness, what, what was I doing back there for so long? Every time we make progress, I think we're ashamed of where we were, which is no harm. It's no harm that we're trying to move forward. Every time you discover a deeper, a greater depth of love, we realize just how small our love is or how great our love could be. Do you know, we're, we're called to be filled with God who is love. And in doing that, then no cross, no cross is victorious in our life. Nothing. I love those, those words from, from St. Paul. Uh, it's the letter to the Romans, uh, chapter 8. If you want to check it out, it's towards the end of chapter 8, verse 35. Nothing, therefore, can come between us and the love of Christ. Even if we are troubled or worried or being persecuted or lacking food or clothes or being threatened or even attacked, as scripture promised, for your sake we are being massacred daily and reckoned as sheep for the slaughter. These are the trials through which we triumph by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, that neither death, nor life, no angel, no prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, nor any power, or height, or depth, or any created thing can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a way to live your life, like with that kind of conviction, that no matter what comes our way, it can be transformed into glory through love. That's what Jesus did. That's our call. We're Christians. We're supposed to be like the Lord and imitate him. And so we thank the Lord for this beautiful day of glory and for this, this wonderful attitude with which we can live our lives, that, that no matter what happens, nothing can come between us and the love of God. And if we are open to it, nothing can come between us and eternal salvation. The Lord died on the cross to get you into heaven. He offers this grace to you. What he asks of you is an open heart. And so we thank the Lord for every way that he has blessed us in this Lenten season, in this year, in this stage of our lives, whatever, if we're young or old or married or retired or widowed, whatever it may be, the Lord is preparing us for heaven. So may we open our hearts to the next steps the Lord is taking us in this great school of love. Amen. <laughs>